2021, everyone. Hopefully everybody had a good start to this year. And even though I think we'll still be in the house this year, hopefully it's not as crazy as last year was. I decided in November to put my grandson in daycare because work, it was hectic. I was finishing up my MBA and I just did not have time. But during the holidays, because the daycares are closed for I think about almost two weeks, I had to take care of him, which is something that I have not had to do full time since mid-November. So I thought about what were the things that really, really helped me during the two weeks that daycare was closed and I had to take care of my grandson. He is now almost eight months old. So it was definitely different than when he was younger because now he is more alert, more aware of his surroundings and what's going on. And it isn't just easy to just have him in the sleep schedule because before he was sleeping probably like four times during the day. He's now down to two naps. So I definitely had to keep him entertained while also doing work, which is something that I was doing during the holidays. I was still working. So these are the baby items that definitely helped me during that time. And hello, and for those who don't know me, my name is Siobhan. I do productivity management and organizational videos. I also talk about working with a baby because that is what I'm doing right now. And so I hope that you're able to subscribe if you want, hit that notification bell, and also subscribe to my newsletter, which I'll have the link down below. So I'm gonna break this down into categories to make it easier. Um, so the first category is baby gear. So what is the baby gear that I am using for him right now that has helped me keep him entertained as well as make sure that he is not putting himself in danger because he's not crawling yet, but he's starting to do that dragging thing that babies sometimes do. And so we're almost there. So I can't just leave him alone because he is starting to drag himself all over the room. He's not like stationary. So the first thing is a baby swing. Now that he's older, I can put him in the swing for 30 minutes and he'll be in there uh, entertained. And so the swing has been great, especially in the morning when we come down and I have to feed the dog and do all the things to make sure that the house is up and running. I can put him in the baby swing and know that he is in a secure place where I can watch him and get the stuff done that I need to get done. I believe that a lot of people say when I looked online, I think that the baby swing only lasts like six to nine months. So I know that eventually I give it another, I think it will be this, this month actually, I'm gonna be giving that baby swing away because he will no longer use it. But for now, the baby swing is great to have around. So another great baby gear is a bouncy seat. So I use the bouncy seat in the bathroom because when I'm trying to get all his bath stuff situated, I can have him in this bouncy seat next to me while I get that done. Or if I have to take a shower, then what I usually do in the morning, our morning routine is I get up, I get him dressed, feed him, and then I'll take a shower. And so then I can have him in the bouncy seat and not have him in the crib. And so it's a good place to just have him there with me and watch him while I'm trying to get things done in the bathroom. He doesn't use the bouncy seat as much for during the day other than that. Um, he used to, but he's starting not to be as entertained in the bouncy seat as he used to. And I think it's because now that he's able to move around, that's all he wants to do. But it's good when I'm trying to get things done like five, 10 minutes, it's a great place to have for him. So a play mat, it's great. Um, we have the Fisher Price one and I love it. It had different functions, but now that he's able to sit up, you can turn it into a little piano and he can play on it. So I think that's really nice. It keeps him well entertained while I'm right there next to him. He sits there and he'll play on the piano or play with like the little um, toys that are dangling. And uh, it's a great way for him to be entertained while I have to get work done. And then these two go together, so a foam mat. Um, I have that with uh, a gate. The reason I got it was because I had like a blanket um, and he bumped himself and then I realized that he needs something that's more like a foam. You know, for people who have done gymnastics in the past, like I did when I was a kid, 
foam mats are great. So I got him a foam mat. So when he's trying to crawl or drag himself, whatever you want to call it, at least he's not like hitting himself in the hardwood floor. Um, because with the blanket, you still feel the hardwood floor with the foam mat. It is great. I found one on Amazon that was really, it was well priced. Cause there were some that were like over a hundred dollars and I was being super frugal. I was like, Nope. So I got one that was like $50. And so that one has been really nice and it has like different designs if you flip it over. So that has been good. Um, then I got him like a, a fence or a, like a gated play yard area. And it's for when he actually starts moving around. And it's one that it will go, he'll be using well into his toddler years. I can have that in my kitchen while I'm trying to get things done in the kitchen. That's where I spend the majority of my time. And so he can be there with me while I'm trying to get things done. Right now, I have the Christmas tree there, so I can't put it at where I want to put it. But when I bring down the Christmas tree after Three Kings Day, then I'll have that area for him. So when I'm trying to get, get things done in the kitchen, he can be there with me. Right now, I do have him in the high chair, which is good because I have... Um, like this whole setup in the high chair. So while I'm trying to get things done, activity center is also great to have. So my dad got him the activity center that has like the Finding Nemo theme, which is really, really nice. And I can put him in there and he loves jumping around and also like all the little activities that are there. If he starts getting a little bit bored, I also like will put one of his toys there. But the only annoying thing about that is because he's at the age where now he like takes it and throws it down and then looks at you and, be, and is like, pick it up. So that part is annoying, but you know what, whatever it is to get him entertained while I'm working uh, that activity center is great. And it has like so many, like I'm even entertained by it. It has like, um, all the little like characters from finding Nemo and it has them like all around. And one thing I love is that the seat, um, swirls around 360 degrees so he can like move around with it. So it gives him that sense of being, active and moving around which is something that he's not able to really do in the swing or the bouncy seat or the high chair and he's able to sit there the only con about that is the fact that it is pretty heavy so it's not like i can just pick it up and put it in another room or take it to the basement and and be happy with it no i have to sit there and just have it in one place because I'm not moving that thing, especially with all the little gadgets it has. I'll be popping those off while I'm trying to move it. So that's the only thing about it is the fact that you have to stay in one place, which is something that I did like about the bouncy seat is that I could just move it to any location that I wanted. But as I said, I am getting that area in the kitchen because I think that that's the part that is really missing is the kitchen and so he'll be there with me while I'm trying to get things done but that activity center is amazing so I definitely recommend you get one especially for babies that are like six to nine months so one of the milestones that I was looking forward to and it's probably one of the milestones that a lot of parents were like huh is that I was ready for him to put his pacifier back in his mouth I tried so hard during the times that I was trying to sleep train him to get him away from that pacifier, but maybe it was just because I was tired, I was not able to. But around maybe like six and a half months, he started actually learning how to put the pacifier back in his mouth. So one of the things that I got, I don't have it with him when he's sleeping, but I have it during the day, is a Wubbanub fake version and the reason I say that is because he never took to the Wubbanub and is because of the pacifier he has. The only pacifiers that he'll take are the MAMS. And so one thing that I love about the ones the, the Wubbanub fake out versions, I don't know what you call them, but because there's different people that make them, is the fact that it still has the stuffed toy, but then you can pick whatever pacifier you want to attach to it. And those have been great because he can just pick it up and put it back in his mouth, which is why I think Wubbanubs were so popular. And I'm able to not worry about him looking for that pacifier. The one thing I do have with the um, Wubbanub fake version is that even though it's the pacifier is attached to it I still have pacifier holders that have like the string and stuff like that I still have it attached because it can be attached to his bib and then he can find it instead of just being and also you know I don't want it to be all thrown on the floor with him if he's on the play mat and stuff so it's good for him to be able to have that webinar fake version because he can play with it and then on top of that it's easier for him to be 
put that pacifier back in his mouth. So now let's move to the toy section on what's helped me keep him entertained while I'm trying to work. And I will say like the soft books and the board books have been great. I prefer the soft books because um, the board, he tries to put the board books in his mouth because like babies tend to just put everything in their mouth and you know, they're board books. The soft books at least, they're soft texture. And one thing I like about the soft books is that it has different textures. So it starts teaching about um, different textures and it helps with their senses. And so I love those soft books and I got him the black and white ones because black, white, and red actually, and that helps them him as well with his brain de development and so I really love those soft books and I'll sit there with him like they're not actual like text more pictures of things so I'll sit there and say it to him in English and then as well as Spanish because I'm trying to teach him Spanish um, so that's one of the things that I love about those soft books teething toys are a must and so I usually have them in the freezer when he's not using them but when he's in the high chair I have those teething toys and he loves them I try to hook him up to the pacifier holders because as I said he's at that point now that he throws everything on the floor and then looks at me like pick it up and so for me not to have to do that I prefer to just put the pacifier holder clip that thing on his bib and then when he tries to throw it and it comes back to him like a boomerang he's like what happened and I'm like yeah I got you but love those teething rings because it, they're frozen and it helps with his teeth so and it keeps him entertained when he's in the high chair and I'm in the kitchen trying to get things done I also got him a rattle. There was a rattle that a lot of people tended to like, but um, I got him another one where, um, and I'll show a picture of it, but you press on it and it'll like make noise. And now he's at the point, at first when I first got it for him, I think it was he was two months old. He did not know what to do. And he just looked at it like, what is this? But now that he's older, he knows to bang it and it'll make little flashing noises and sounds and stuff. And that thing, for some reason, it keeps them entertained and I love it. So I definitely think like an, a rattle, there are different ones. There's ones that like that move around and shake and things like that. So just find the one that makes more sense for you. This is the one that worked for us. And so that's the one thing that I recommend is a rattle. This was only like three bucks. And I was like, why didn't I get this before? But stacking cups. So, and then what I like about these stacking cups, that it has numbers at the bottom of it. But that has been amazing. Like he sits there, he's not at the point where he knows how to stack, but he knows how to bang those things. And I actually just read an article today about the fact that it's good to get them things where they can just bang it and things like that. So I do recommend the stacking cups and they're definitely affordable. Another toy that's kind of like the stacking cup is the rings. So I got him the Infantino rings and he loves those rings. He still doesn't know how to put the rings back in the holder but hopefully eventually he'll get there but I love the fact that eventually it will also teach him different sizes because it stacks up into different sizes and then as well as it has like different um, ones that rattle and different textures so definitely get him the rings as well very similar to that as well is actually blocks so I got him these blocks and they're soft blocks because I was afraid that if I got him the wooden ones he would hit his head especially that I'm telling you that he likes to bang and stuff but these blocks are really great because it does have like little educational things like numbers and animals and things but and shapes and as well as the fact that it supposedly will help him learn how to like you know stack them on top of each other so those three toys they're kind of in the same vein of things but I have all three and I think that they're great what I try to do is bring out one or two toys at a time not all the toys at once and so that it helps him not get bored and so that is something like even with his Christmas toys I have some that are still packed somewhere because I'll take those out once a month and then it's not something that is just brought out at once because kids tend to get bored easily and then I also got him this like cow musical toy and that thing is so, I love it. Like it has like little buttons, numbers. It has like different musical songs that it has. They have a little knob and you can flip it. And then when you flip it, then it changes the uh, features that you, when you press the buttons that you can use. So that thing, oh my God, that thing keeps him entertained for a long time. So I love that, that little cow. And then lastly, this, um, Thing that I have in his high chair I have um, it's like a twirly thing and I'll post a video of it but that thing oh my god that's what I use on his high chair and that thing can keep him entertained the only thing is that now he's gotten strong enough that he can take it out throw it and and stuff Ooh, 
I'm telling you, never was my favorite phase. But um, that toy is great, and it has like a lot of different things in it. It's very intricate, so I love that toy. And lastly, my sister got him a musical mat, and oh my god, I love that musical mat. I was shocked of all the features that are in it, and it's great. So definitely those, that musical mat is definitely a must. So those are the baby items that I use to keep my grandson entertained while I was working during the holidays. Please let me know if there are any that you recommend that your babies are using. I would love to know. But thank you again and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.